problem. We're going to start our presentation, but Lisa is missing. I don't know where she went or what she's doing, but she is gone. She is a gone girl. And here are your two guys. So we're going to direct this kind of story just like the plot line of Gone Girl. Amy goes missing. We have our detective Marciano. I'm, I'm going to be trying to find her. We're going to be trying to find Lisa. And we're also going to be explaining to you exactly how it is with Gone Girl. We think we have a good idea of how this lead could help us find Lisa. So we're going to start with our first clue that Lisa left us, which is a pretty decent quote from the book. Now, Amy's quote from the book reads, I picture myself as a student with a student so handsome and wise, my mind opens up not to mention my thighs. If I were your pupil, there'd be no need for flowers, maybe just a naughty appointment during your office hours. So hurry up and get going. Please do in this time. I'll teach you a thing or two. And so what Amy's trying to explain is like, okay, oh. through Nick's mind, she's like, all right, you know, they do this yearly treasure hunt every year for their anniversary. And this is their fifth anniversary this year, so it's got to be big. This year is all about making things big. And so now Nick has to go out, gets the first clue, tries to find Amy. We're gonna to try to find Lisa here, but I'm also gonna set a little bit of background for Nick and Amy's story so that you guys can enjoy it, follow the plot line as well. Now, Amy and Nick live in New York. They met, they fell in love, and everything just seemed just say okay. They had just a beautiful, remarkable start. Like you would read like a passionate novel and you'd be like, oh, that's so cute. I'm gonna take my girlfriend to see that movie. Happy Valentine's Day. And then Nick's mother gets sick. And that's when things kind of take a turn in the relationship. They move to Louisville, Missouri, middle of nowhere. And things start to change and things go on and it gets a little bit rough on them. But they continue to go on and they're still together after five years. Along with Nick, he has a sister, a twin sister, monkey babies. His sister is named Margo, go for short. They are super close twins, she is pretty much exactly like Nick. And they own this bar together that they have in Hannibal, Missouri. And so this bar kind of got started from Amy's parents. Amy's parents are just filthy rich because Amy is this depicted character as amazing Amy that her parents made as a book. And they're like super, super rich off this book. Like little like, oh, hey Clifford, like that kind of book. And so, Nick decided to buy this bar with their money. All right. As we can see, uh, Lisa left us a little clue. It says, let's start the journey. Please don't hate. Your very first clue is in room 258. So, we have to go. We're going to go to, uh, we're going to go to 258. Let's go. Let's go. Stealing a coffee shop. Yeah. Where's she at? I have on the glue. All right, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our genre. Basically, as you can see, here's the first little thing. These little footsteps, because mostly in our uh, mystery thriller, because that's what it is, there's always like a mystery that you have to go through and there's always clues left behind. So in the book Gone Girl, Amy writes in a diary entry on her first day of her disappearance, basically. And she's basically glad, and she says, I'm glad that I'm missing. And this is how she says it. I'm so much happier now that I'm dead, technically missing, soon to be pronounced dead. So basically, uh, this relates to the genre of uh, this show called Revenge. And in the show, there's a character named Victoria that uh, fakes her own death in a plane explosion in order to frame her husband from the bomb found in the plane. The archetype of this is Victoria's a stereotypical psycho wife who will do everything in her power to make her husband pay just like Amy. It was predictable because Victoria is the main enemy in the show and there's no way her death is real. Basically, the main character won't die. All right, All right. I need your guys' help. Do you guys see any clues out of the ordinary? All right, perfect. Oh, well, job or no? Give me my second or second. All right, so right here, as you can see, it's like a phone, right? It's a flip phone, a old phone. 
And uh, in Mystery Thriller is someone who uh, basically, uh, usually one of the characters has a flip phone because they're either hiding something or they don't want to be found, just like Amy. And in this one it says uh, from Gone Girl, no one saw or heard Amy after 11 p.m. the night before. The police can say I killed her because I saw you. And this is basically Nick talking to his mistress, Andy. That's why he has a flip phone, because he doesn't want his wife to know about that. And during that time, he doesn't have an alibi because his wife told him uh, to go think about the relationship and go to the beach. So his wife set him up saying like, hey, go to the beach, because then he'll be by himself and he won't have an alibi whatsoever. And um, this, was a, uh, this is relatable to the passenger because in case you were wondering, I didn't do it. I didn't have anything to do with Frank's death. I don't have an alibi, so you have to take my word for it. In this example, the character doesn't have an alibi, just like Nick and Gone Girl. The stereotype is that the person that doesn't have an alibi is always guilty. However, that is not always the case. It's predictable because readers suspect that they are guilty since, uh, since so far in the book, there's no evidence saying otherwise. Any other clues? Clue one. <laughs> I'm very powerful. So basically in this one, um, in Gone Girl, Amy starts writing uh, in her diary, right? And uh, she's writing about her and Nick's relationship. She begins with uh, loving entries about her husband and how badly she wants a child. But once Nick denies her wishes, uh, she switches up her style of writing. And uh, she begins writing in her diary, portraying Nick as an abusive husband who she is terrified of. For example, when she says the diary is very, uh, this is when um, one of the detectives, her name is Bonnie, is questioning uh, Amy about what happened. She's saying the diary is very, very concerning. This diary alleges abuse and your fears that Nick didn't want the baby, uh, that he might want to kill you. And this is kind of relatable exactly to The Silent Wife, because in The Silent Wife, from the beginners, readers know that Jody is going to kill her cheating husband, Todd. Their marriage is in shambles and continues to deteriorate as the novel progresses like Nick and Amy's uh, relationship in Gone Girl. These two have been over for a long time, told from alternate, uh, alternating his and her chapters. So basically in the book, like it goes from present to past about Amy and Nick's uh, entries. And uh, this is a stereotypical relationship that ends in a heartbreak and revenge. Once the wife finds out her husband is unfaithful, she goes through two predictable stages, grief and then revenge, just like in the book Gone Girl. Any other clues? Yeah, you got five All right. So just like in any industry thriller, you know, kind of portraying like you gotta look around with the magnifying glass. So, and uh, Gone Girl, when Amy was telling her story to the cops, Nick realizes a little flaw in her story about being able to use a box cutter as a weapon against her attacker, even though she was already uh, restrained. Uh, she said, or Nick said, how did she use a knife if she uh, was always tied up? This is the question Nick asked the cops when hearing her version of the story. And an example of this is, uh, Law and Order SVU, when the victims and the bystanders are brought in for questioning, there's always a missing piece of the puzzle and they never uh, tell the whole story. The stereotype would be that the victim is always guilty. Also, this is predictable because obviously you won't uh, give everything away right off the bat. They need to have enough time for a 50 minute show. Mm -hmm. Any other clues? You're missing one. Right there. Is thumbprint, Mr. Marcia? It is, Corey. So basically, uh, for our last uh, example, uh, when Nick goes to the police station and they tell him to notify his wife's parents about her disappearance, he said he'll call later. And uh, an hour passes by and the cops tell him, uh, you should call her parents, and he hesitates kind of. And this quote portrays Nick talking to his, uh, Amy's mother. Amy is missing. Since when? Uh, we're not sure. I left this morning a little after seven. And you waited till now to call us, so that's kind of like it's uh it's kind of foreshadowing that he's kind of hesitating and like he doesn't want to call, making it almost seem like he has something to do with it. And uh, this example kind of portrays that. Uh, Never coming back is the book, uh, taking place in Hellsberg, Sweden. This novel shows uh, Zalia, uh, wife and mother, as she disappears after a night out with coworkers. 
her husband, Mike, fearing she's left on her own accord, um, waits several days to report her missing, leading police to suspect that he's responsible, like Nick and Gone Girl. All evidence points to Mike, but the reality of the situation is far more frightening. The stereotype would be that the character is innocent, but is portrayed as guilty to throw the readers off track. It's predictable that he'll be, uh, he'd be a suspect because he didn't call authorities right away. So it's just showing that like Nick didn't call uh, Amy's mom right away, just like in this book, he didn't call the authorities right away. Those are all the clues. You guys are very good detectives. Thanks, boy. All right. And as Marciano says, somebody calling right away. The people he called right away is this cop right here. Not the exact description, but donut in hand, you know how some cops are, and we'll get to it when we get to it. The first cops that showed up to their house, if anybody would else like to see the picture, were just kind of like, okay, great, your wife is missing, who cares? And so they were like, all right, blah, 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 blah. They went on, they're like, okay, now this is getting kind of serious, we're gonna bring some agents in. It's like Marciano said, we had Agent Gilpin and then Agent Bonnie as well. And they try to help and try to figure out where the heck is Amy? And so they look and like depicted as well, the stage where everything is all set up, the scenery. They, they walk in, you look at it, it's all, it's all fixed. It all seems so staged, you know? Like who puts a, a desk on top of a desk? If you're going to mess up a classroom, you just tear everything and rip everything to the ground. It just seemed odd seemed peculiar. It's not like a regular case. This isn't a regular story either, as portrayed by the love between Nick and Amy. Now, back to our first clue here. We we're going to bring some in, but we didn't bring it up to you. In our second clue, there is a red pair of panties. They're black here, but they are red. In the clue, Bonnie and Gilpin, Gilpin's a little bit shy about it, grabbing the underwear, getting a little frisky with it. He kind of realizes, okay, like, oh, like, this is what you and Amy do in your office. All right. And so Nick works as a teacher. I should have explained that as well, being in room 258, this is an appropriate place to be. And so kind of things in between here and there, now that Nick works as like a teacher and that happened in the room, they're like, oh, okay, like, perfect. They just have like little things. And Amy leaves a note. Now, this note isn't a clue, but it's more of a love note to Nick sparking Nick's mind like, maybe she does love me. Maybe this is some grand five-year finale. Oh my God, great. And so she writes him this note and he's beginning to like feel for her again. Like their love isn't like stalled out, it's not dying. Like there's something there. And so while they're looking for it, it's like, okay, like what, what can we do? Well, the other thing that they left would be Ooh, that's far away. Well, clue number two. Also the same clue number two that we said about for you guys. Now, Amy's clue is picture me. I'm crazy about you. My future's anything but hazy with you. You took me here so I could hear your chat about your boyhood adventures. Crummy jeans and visor hat. Screw anyone else. For us, they all got ditched. And let's sneak a kiss, pretend we just got hitched. Now, what ends up happening is the story is Nick, after you know a long day, is kind of like, okay, my wife is missing. This day has been bonkers. He just kind of waits until the morning, hides it from, hides the clue from the cops, so he can do it discreetly himself. Discreetly isn't, you know, he's going around doing things with his little disposable phone. Doesn't want anybody snooping in on him, like his own, his own private mystery to find his wife, separated from the cops. And Lisa's clue to you guys it says. Is, your next clue is a meeting, but your teacher's a specter. The next lesson you'll learn will be a lecture. Now, I'm gonna give Ben an opportunity to redeem the Wait, clue. Wait, Ben. Where are we going? Where are we going, Ben? So your next clue is a meeting, but your teacher's a specter. Your next lesson you'll learn will be a lecture. Lecture? You bet. <laughs> 